you, dude. Get out of there. Going live. Hey, y'all. I'm James Wright, and welcome to the shop. Tonight, we're going to be making a half-lap dovetail. Uh, it's like a regular dovetail, except for it's not. And it's bigger, and it's cooler, and, uh, well, it's just it's, it's a half-lap dovetail. Um, so, yeah, we'll be taking a closer look at this in a little bit. Uh, but... Things coming up in the Wood by Right. There are several events that I'm going to be going to. If you would actually like to find woodworking events uh, near you, um, go to handtoolfinder.com. There's a link in the description as well. Um, I have a list of all of the hand tool events that I have heard of around the world, um, and you can actually sort through them on there. Uh, but events that I have coming up that I'm going to be at if you want to come see me. Uh, next one is August 6th, this weekend, uh, at Garfield Farms in La Fox, Illinois. It's one of my favorite MWTCA meets. Uh, this one is actually free. For, uh, is, is the, the public can come to it as well. Uh, it's not free um, because you're at a museum. You have to pay the entrance for that. Um, but if you are an MWTCA member, you can come early. Um, otherwise, it opens for the public at 9 o'clock, I think it is. Um, next one, the big one, Handworks, uh, September 1st to the 2nd, uh, just over a month away. It's in Amana, Iowa. It is, uh, people are flying in from all over the world for it. It is the big woodworking event. It used to happen every two years. It's been about seven years since the last time they've had it, and it is, it's, it's huge. It's an entire town devoted to hand tools for two days. Um, all of the big gurus are there. Um, you're going to find all of the hand tool makers are going to be there. Uh, it is just an incredible amount of fun. Um, so yeah, handworks. Um, and uh, there's links to all these down below or information on where you can find out more. Uh, next one is September 10th in Frankfort, Illinois at MWTCA meet. Then I'm going to be flying out to uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, this is the this is a fun outdoor one um, at Ed's place. Um, so I've been I've been wanting to get to this one for a few years, but finally got it into the calendar. Um, and then September 28th through the, through the 30th is the national meet in Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, so that is the big one. Uh, that is uh, the, the biggest tool sale in the world. So, yeah. Uh, lots of fun things coming up, and it's going to be a really crazy September. So, um, yeah. life is fun. <laughs> what are we doing? Dovetailed half lap joint. Let's get to this. So, um, let me flip over to this one here. It is a half lap joint, just like uh, we did before on this corner here, um, except for it is through, and we're going to make it a dovetail, so it comes out this way. So it's only it's only loose in one joint where it can come apart. Uh, so we're basically going to treat it like a half lap, except for we're going to cut a weird shape into it. Now the the the, the difficult point in this one uh, is that let me get this in focus. Um, is that we want to make sure the distance from this shoulder to this shoulder is the exact distance is here to here and here to here. And that's one of the fun things that makes this a little more difficult to work is that all of these measurements have to be the same. And so that's why we never actually measure them because if you measure them, you're always going to be adding a little bit into it. We want to try and make things as close to reality. So I've got this set up on here. Um, and so far we've got the half lap joint. We have the bridled miter joint. Uh, we have the um, uh, miter, uh, bridle joint. We have the uh, drawboard mortise and tenon, the regular mortise and tenon, and we're going to be putting the, um, the dovetail on the other end of this one. So the first thing we need to determine is the distance from this shoulder here to wherever this shoulder will be here. So in this case, it would be from this line, this shoulder, to this shoulder. We want to make sure that's the same as this and it's the same as up here. So the only, I could put this board onto here and figure out where that distance is. But I'm actually wanting to work off of this one up on the top um, because this is the one I referenced to make this one. So on this one, what I can do is I'm going to put together these three pieces <coughs> and then I can put this shoulder smack up against the end here. And so I know this shoulder is referenced off of this board. And then on this end, I can come over here and I can feel and make sure that these are perfectly smooth. Now, that these are perfectly smooth means that our shoulder now needs to be in the distance of this board's thickness. Um, because whatever joint I'm going to be doing here is also going to be in the distance of this board's thickness. Uh, so that is the most important thing here. So I know that since the distance from this shoulder line here to the end of this board is the exact same on these two, 
I know that I can trust it to take this over here and mark out my shoulder on here. And if I light out all these boards to be exactly the same length and size, that should be true. But I always want to come back and check it because for some reason this board may have shifted, especially since I cut this off to make it a standard uh, mortise and tenon. So a little bit confusing, but I just want to lay that out. We're going to be using these two boards to set this up. Uh, yeah, so any questions so far? Um, just Clockman's. On a tabletop, there is a V8 clip that moves when the wood moves. Where can I get them? Yes, a figure eight clip. Um, I actually uh, looked that up a little bit ahead of time and had a link for Sarah, so I put that in the chat. Um, I actually get mine off of Amazon. Um, they are, um, yeah, really affordable. I think it's like $8 for a pack of two dozen. Um, and that's where I normally get them, except for I've got a pile of them and I'm I don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah. A figure eight clip. Um, so you have the, the skirts that are under, underneath the table. So the legs, the skirts join into it. And you want to attach the top down to it. Well, the problem is the top is going to expand and contract, and the skirts aren't because boards don't, don't expand and contract lengthwise. They only expand and contract across the grain. Um, so we want that table to be able to expand and contract on top. And so a figure eight clip attaches to the top of the stretcher and attaches to the underside of the table but it also rotates and pivots on the board so as the board on top expands and contracts that figure eight clip can move a little bit. Um, that's, that's my preferred way of attaching tabletops down. So, ah yes, first things first. We're going to take this board that's intersecting, we're going to put it on the end, and we're going to flush this up with my finger, and straight across from that I'm going to put my knife in, reference off that surface, just push it down a little ways. I'm going to bring in my square, set it on here, put that knife into the mark, slide the square up against it, and go one, two, three. And in this case, I have to decide, do I want the dovetail on this side or this side? I'm going to put the dovetail on, um, on this side back here. So I want to carry this line on three sides, but I don't want it back here because this will be a dovetail. This will actually still be showing because it will be like this board here. So I want to carry that around. So <coughs> this is my reference face, this is the side with the tape. I want to keep the fence on the reference face. Put the knife into the line, slide it up against, light, medium, hard. Flip it over, flip this over so we're still referencing the side with the tape. Put the knife into the line, light, medium, Hard, and there is our uh, there's our shoulder mark. Next thing we need to do is mark in how far we want it to be about half the thickness of the board, but how far are we taking in the cheek of this cut? So I'm going to grab a marking gauge, and I could go back and forth and figure out exactly which is halfway, but honestly, it doesn't really matter as long as I reference from the same side on both pieces it's going to be the same line. So I'm going to eyeball. Now, is that set the right way? What? You're marking That's gauge. what I'm saying. I'm just going to eyeball this. Okay. So I'm going to put this in the middle of the board. Looks middle-ish. <laughs> Slide the fence up against it. Lock it down. And if my wife suddenly coughs up a lung, I love her deeply, but she really needed to change her cigarette type. <laughs> I was just telling them about the bad cold I had in there. <laughs> One saying scotch, the other saying bourbon. <laughs> I said I have sun tea. <laughs> <laughs> sun tea, yes. And that one goes on there. So there's our lines on that. First thing we're going to do is we're going to treat this just like the half lap or half of a tenon. We're going to cut down the cheek and we're going to cut down the shoulder. Ah, and I did sharpen my tenon saw. What? I know! <laughs> Put it over here so you can see a little better. So we're going to grab the tin and saw. It's a rip cut tooth with small teeth and a tall back. Get the camera situated to actually get this thing. And you've heard me say this quite a few times, but we're going to say it again. <laughs> we want to make sure we're staying on this side because we're, we're taking off the waste on our blue marked side. I'm going to start in the back. 
Just nick it in right on the line. And then we're going to slowly work it back along the plate until we're over here and we have a kerf running all the way across. Woo, it is sharp. It's wanting to bite and jump. <laughs> it is wanting to catch. All right, now we're established. I'm going to start taking it down. I want to go corner to corner, 45 across. Means I don't need to push it quite so hard because the more you push into the saw, the more force you put into it, the more those teeth want to bind in, and it suddenly wants to stop on you. Let the saw do its work. Now that it's actually sharp, it can do that. So the question they have is, did you fix the kink in your saw? No. Um, this one is probably beyond repair, so I just try not to use this last few inches of the saw. Um, I guess you always have a reference now. No, and I've got... I've got another tin and saw that I like even more than this one, um, but I want to change the back on it because the back isn't folded, uh, so it's not pinching quite right. And it wants to come out if it if it jams. Um, so, yeah, I've got three tin and saws, and none of them are exactly what I want. That's why I'm always bouncing between them. <laughs> Turn it, come out from the other way. We already have a kerf established on the top. Tear <coughs> off my line, so I'm scratching it back on. Corner to corner, now straight down. Let's see, point to a little more, point to point. There's that. Now we can lay it down and we can cut the uh, shoulder. Now if you imagine for a second that I'm taking my tenon, you've got a cheek and a shoulder. So we cut the cheek, now we're going to cut the shoulder. Can you, can you do that a couple more times? Head and cheeks and shoulders, toes. Start on the far side, get right on your line, then draw it back across the board. Established across. Actually, bowed, uh, bowed inside. Uh -oh. So that means I got a little bit of work to do. So let me actually move this down so you can see the bow. <coughs> so that means I never checked the set on this one. I assumed it was okay because it was left over from the last one, but it may have been that the kink is still getting in the way. But uh, here, come on. There we go. So what I can do is grab a chisel and put it across here, and it rocks <laughs> a lot. <laughs> so I know this line is good, and this line is good, and this line is good. We have a big, heavy sp um, bow in the middle. Now, the obvious answer to that is to grab a rabbiting shoulder plane. Did I forget to bring my plane down that... What's that? Did I forget my plane? Oh, is it still upstairs? Aww, uh, or good. I can come in with a chisel and don't go towards yourself, but I'm going to because of the cameras in the way. Just being a little more careful with it. And as long as I do, here, move the camera over here. Should be up on the couch. As long as I just do this area here until you are flat back here. A little more. Then, oh, still need a little more right there. As long as I get this area back by the shoulder, I can come in with a regular plane. This will need a lot of work. There we go. I'm straight across there. So what I can do is grab 
regular old bench plane, not a shoulder plane. And I can just do this. And I'm not going to come all the way back to here, and I'm not going to blow out the other side. I'm just going to do the middle area. Can I show them my present? What's that? Can I show them my present? Oh, yeah. I was at the that meeting in, in uh, um, Florida this weekend. But James that? is terrible with names, so he doesn't remember. I cannot remember who gave that. <laughs> so thank you wife, if you're so. here. If not, Asawi. Yeah, it's a cute little uh, 102. Do, do, and, do, do, uh, do, do. Serious size. It is serious size. It's got a little weight behind it though. It's surprising. Yeah, it's got a, some mass to it. So it's now not I can blue. See We're going to <laughs> still have a little bit of a bow, and having the chisel on here, rocking it from side to side, makes it much easier to see where is that point. It's right in the middle. Just a little more. Now the other answer is I could come through with a router plane. I should want to do that. I've got some time tonight. This is a pretty quick one. Let's grab a de router plane. And let's set it down to just above the depth. Loosen it down one more step. So rather than loosening this, I'm just going to drop this down that little bit. Loosen that. The iron drops. Tighten it back up. And we're down one step. Uh, I have a couple of questions. What's that? Timothy Mallon wanted to know, is your brass back saw a Lee Nielsen? Nope. I do not own a Lee Nielsen saw. I've used a few of them, but no, I don't have that one. Uh, this one is actually from Jared Green. <coughs> Um, file and hammer. Oh, that's right. <laughs> um, of the makers of saws out there right now, if I had to buy a saw, he's the guy I would go to. Um, however, <laughs> good luck. Um, his back yeah. order, and he's, he's retooling at the moment, and so his getting a saw from him is, yeah, you'll pay for it. <laughs> It'll be well worth it. <laughs> so let's see what we got here now. Yeah, it's better. So now I've got a nice clean surface all the way across there. And that portion is done. Now the next thing we need to do is create a dovetail on this. And I need to figure out what shape do I want it to be. The nice thing about that is you can make it whatever shape you want it to be. Um, it's your thing and at this point as long as it's fatter at one end than the other, as long as it's fatter at the end than it is at the back, you're good. There's no right or wrong with it. Now you're going to get some gurus that tell you, ooh, this angle is best for hardwoods and this angle is best for softwoods. And there's a little bit of truth to that, but not as much as you might think. So what I do is I go, you know what? Hmm, that looks about right. We're going to do that. And with that in place, I am sweating even more than normal because I just came back from uh, Wildcats and I have been Running, 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 running. In circles. I teach um, cross country running, or coach cross country running. And, uh, whew. Oh, okay, I need to do one other thing on this first. The other thing I need to do is I need to put a few nick marks on this surface. I'm putting that right into there, sliding up against. And I'm going in a little ways, but I don't know how far. So I'm just putting a couple marks in here to know. Where is that shoulder inside? Then I'll bring out this bevel gauge and I'm going to put it right on the corner. And you could move it in a little ways, but I like doing it right on the corner, just like the look of it. I'm going to slide the bevel gauge up until it touches. I'm going to lock it down, come back here and go light, medium, hard. And then we're going to do the same thing on this side. This would be fantastic if I had a third hand. I can I give you a hand. I'm so excited and jumpy. I gave you a hand. Yeah, you're good at that. 
don't move. All right there. Do you need me light. to come up there? Medium. James Loyal. Nope, I'm good. Okay. Right. Here we go. Now we got our dovetail marks in there. Um, oh. What? Wow. Yeah, did you oh, eat? Gosh. I haven't, well, okay. Oh, I'm on that camera. <laughs> Here. Did you eat? <laughs> I, I need to text. Like four o'clock before running. <laughs> Do I need to text Melody to bring you a granola bar or something? No, I'm good. I'm not also, at work. Do is, not make me do nursing right now. <laughs> the, the other thing is that I, um, when I'm make, doing woodworking, I get excited. This is, it's fun for me. Um, and my wife will tell you I was absolutely drained before this came on. The cameras come on and I'm doing this and I'm having a lot of fun. And so when I get fun, my hands start to, it's just something I naturally do. But uh, not eating makes it even better. And just coming back from doing an extra long run does it even better. Uh, Crosscut saw. So we're grabbing our sash saw again, and what do you down. mean you don't eat no meat? <laughs> <laughs> let's switch back over to this one. <coughs> so, oh, excuse me. Put this on here. Stay on that shoulder line we had before. And we're just going to go down to where we intersect the dovetail line. Flip it over. Do it this way because my mic's marks are all on this side of the board. And we'll do the same thing here. Yep, right to there. Right to there. Now the difficult one. We need to make this long angle cut. And rather than keeping the, the board vertical, we're actually gonna lean it so that that is also vertical. And I'm gonna grab my tenon saw again. And this one, actually, I'm going to move the camera over to this side so you guys can see this a little bit better. And hopefully I can stay out of the way. So what we've got here is how do you cut on that fine angle? And starting on the corner can be very, very difficult for people. Um, and it is a skill. So what I like to do is I'm going to bend my hand over here, put my thumbnail here so it's sliding on my thumbnail. And the idea is you should be able to slide the saw without touching the wood and the thumbnail gives you a point. I'm just going to use the side of the teeth to nick in a little bit until I get a ledge. Now that I have a ledge, I can cut. Except I'm going a little bit off the line, so I'm going to pull it back over. There we go. A little bit off that line again. There we go. The camera's in my way. If you can see. Here, let me show you what, what it looks like here. <laughs> so I'm, I'm cutting like this. <laughs> to try and get the shot. Oh, it's it's all about the shot. Bad plan. Just like that. Then we can rotate it. And do it from Rotate. the other side. Ugh, my nose is just. <clears throat> then we're gonna lean it a little bit this way. Here, let's show this side. That's where we just need a GoPro for your head. <laughs> it actually, it's one of those things that sounds really good, but in reality, the camera image then is like crazy bonkers. I tried that a while ago. Ended up being a really made people want to throw up. Maybe that was just my face. What? Oop. There we go. All okay. right, let's clean up these shoulders before we go any farther. Do a little bit of extra schmoo on here. And I don't like schmoo. I also don't like dull chisels. Here, let's just sharpen this one. So, sharpening is, of course, fine, extra fine feel, good. Clean off some juice. Strop, 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 flip it over. Bend the burr back, 
strop back and forth a couple times. Wait for that burr to come off. And there we go. Sharp. Now let's come back to where are we? Oh yeah, see that's much better. There's one side. This side looks really good. That side looks really good. I want to clean up these faces just a little bit here. So I'm going to turn it around this way and I'm going to grab a file. I'm going to grab this file. Why this one? Because it's the right course that I want on here. And I want to clean up this surface just Can't a little wait, bit. Pause. Pause. What's Can that? you focus? Whoa, or do that. Here, where am I at? I'm down here. Oh. Not that close. <laughs> um, it's still uh, there. Yeah, I've got to position it first and then I can focus. Yeah, that's way there better already. Just going to kind of clean off the surface, smooth it out. There's one side, flip it over, do the other side. Now, if it were a nice straight surface, I'd just take a plane and take one shaving. Uh, but because it has that shoulder, it's easier to just do with the file. Okay, there's half our joint. We've got the dovetail half. Now we need to create the mortise that it goes into. And thankfully, this one is a lot easier and honestly, a lot more fun. Uh, however, I am sweaty. Whew. Let's put these away, get some space. Next thing we need to figure out is the spacing of where this needs to go and the other piece. I still need those. Let's slide them over here. Um, this one. So, no. Make sure I got the right piece here. This one, this one, this one. Okay, one. So, this one needs to go into here. The question is, where does it go this way? And because we already put this tenon over here, we need to make sure that this spacing matches this tenon exactly. Now, thankfully, on this one, the tenon goes into this board. So I can put this in here. And the spacing vertically will match this one. So. Let's set this up. So this needs to go into here, but the question is where does it go this way? It needs to go, and the shoulder here needs to rest at this, at the same distance down from this point as this one here. So what I can do, actually I'm going to do it this way so you guys can see. I'm going to put this on here. I'm going to flush up these ends. Just like that. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to nick that corner. With that nick in place, I'm going to transfer that line across this face. I'm just going to do one light cut because we take this one apart. This is a really nice tight marker <coughs> joint. Right into the face. Now, I need this to go on here. So we need to flip this over and put this knife in to that line we created earlier. Slide that up against. And now with that in place, now I can come in here. Oop, I think I just moved. Put the knife into that line, slide up against. And now I can come in here and I can mark out exactly where I need to cut this way. And I need to cut this way. Light, medium, hard. The other thing I need to figure out is how deep do I need to cut it? Well, we already set that up with the, mark, with the marking gauge. And remember, I want to reference off the side with the tape. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go across this way and flip it over. And we're going to go here to here. 
The other line I want is the lines coming down the two faces. So I can put this in here, put the knife right into that mark, slide up against, down to that line I just drew. Same thing on this side. Flip it over, do two more. I don't need these to be terribly deep, I just need them to be visible. So there's all of our marks we need to cut out. And to do this, I'm going to put it into the vise. Have it poking up just a little bit. Just like that. And I grab my favorite sash saw from Jared Green. He went to green. Starting the far side here. Oh, he went. Pinching the board. Jared. He went. To, I thought it was the joke. Come on. I'm going to pinch the other side and let it slide up against my thumb. Ah. Draw it all the way back across. Now that we're across, we're going to go down to depth. Down to depth on my side, a little more on the other side. There we go. Do the same thing over here. to getting rid of some of this weight. <laughs> Any questions so far? I have a couple, yes. Why don't you um, throw one at me while I get this set up? Mm -hmm. there, David Mackey asked earlier when you were on the um, tenon side, uh, does that rabbit have spurs also? Were you using a rabbit plane earlier? No, it does not have spurs. Okay. Um, if yeah, if I hadn't cut the saw mark down already, then I could use spurs to do that. But since I already had that saw cut come down, then there's no need to worry about spurs. So I'll put this on here, make sure I'm thinking correctly. I am thinking correctly. Good. Now, I'm going to grab a chisel and a thump and whacker. And I'm going to set the camera up a little bit closer for this one because this is one of my favorite parts. Anytime I can grab a chisel and just bang on something and make it look pretty, I love that. So I'm gonna put the chisel on here, bevel up, I'm gonna go about halfway down to the line, and I'm just gonna give it a light tap. I'm aiming up a little bit. Just go across here with light taps, and see how it's already starting to split. Now I'm gonna go a little heavier, and blow it out. Because I already cut down to depth, we can get pretty close to it. I'm going to go about halfway down again. Take that across. And I'm not going all the way over because I don't want to blow out the wood on the other side. I'm going to take down about half that depth again. Getting really close to that marking gauge line. Oop, don't dive down. If anything, aim up a little bit. And then we can loosen it, turn it around, do the same thing from the other side. And yeah, have I said I enjoy this part? I really enjoy this part. Aiming up. That one's blowing off pretty quickly. And each time I'm going about half the distance to the line. Still aiming up a little ways. Now I'm getting close to the line. I'm going to start eyeballing it, just shooting straight back rather than aiming straight up. Okay. Okay, guys, now you can talk about her. The fun of being on call as a manager. Okay, I'm going to go 
Just a little bit more. I want to get this right up to that line. Actually, I'm going to go into the stabbing method. So what I'm doing is I'm actually grabbing the chisel with two hands and just pushing it in. And I found this great for flattening out farther in because I can kind of reference it back where the entering is at. And this stabbing motion is actually very accurate for leveling out a surface. And so sometimes I will just completely level it out doing that. Uh, but in this case, I've got a router plane and I want to use it. Now I've got my uh, spear point bit in there and I want to change that out to my half inch flat, which isn't where it should be. Hmm, got my quarter inch flat, and my half inch is missing. It has been on my list for a long time to build a special storage place for this, but I guess I'm going to be using the spear point this time. So, I need to lift it up so we're a little bit above that line. And we'll just come in and clean it out. This one's a little bit easier because I got reference surface on both sides. So I want to play it safe at the entry side. And then once we get in the middle, then I can go a little bit heavier. Then the other thing I can always do is I want to make sure the tip is precisely the same as this. So I got one more shaving worth to go on it. So I'm just going to loosen this down a little bit, loosen that, push that down, lock it down, and we have one shaving deeper. And I'm not going out the other side yet. I'm just doing from one side toward the middle. And then I can turn it around and come at it from the other side. Make sure that's all nice and clean. Just a little bit of wisping here. Now, got a little bit of schmoo in here to clean out with the chisel. Now the question is, does it fit straight off of the saw, chisel, and router? Without having tested it before, let's find out. I put this on here. Ooh, that's close. Now, do I want to hammer it? See, it's a cattywampus angle. That means it should, oh yeah. That's what I want. What I really, really want. Relatively nice and clean. Really good shoulder there. Um, the only thing is it's got a little bit of a lip here and here. I'm good back here, but I've got this lip. So I'm wanting to see, it looks like there's a gap there. Can I squeeze that out? Um, so what I'm gonna do is grab a hand screw clamp and because I had to force it down in there, I want to see if it's something that I can squeeze out or is there junk still in there? And I could pound on it more, but I find this to be a little bit gentler. It also lets me know when I go to glue it up, I'm gonna be doing this very same thing. And after clamping it down, I still have, I still have that ridge there. So that means I have a little bit more material to take off on the back. Taking it out. So, a little more material on this side. And it might just be one little hump sticking up. And so I'm just going to work on this and see, let's see if there's any comments missing.
Uh, sorry. Cool. Doesn't look like there's anything sticking up, so I'm going to go down one shaving more on this side. Oop, too much. There we go. Just a little bit more. Clean out the junk in there. And let's try it one more time. See how we get on this one. So putting that on. Ooh, okay. I've got, uh, it's just ever so slightly high still. Let me see if I can squeeze it out with this. Because it's really, really close. And I don't want it, I don't want to take off so much material that when I go to squeeze it down and glue it down, it then recesses it and puts it lower on the surface. Yeah, it's just touching over here. Okay, now the other question is. Remember, I had that little bit of problem with the tin inside. So I'm thinking, I'm going to revisit that one. Because I want this to be nice and flush. One of the things about this whole project is, this is a chance to take some time and do things right. So I've got, it's clean on this edge here, but it's sticking up a little bit on this corner. So I think I need to remove a little bit of material from that corner. So I'm keeping track of that corner. It's this one. We're going to bring that over here. And I'm going to use this plane. That should be enough. It's not going to take much at all. Let's see what we get now. One of the things I love about this joint is there's only one way this goes together. <laughs> and uh, it's... Ah, see, that's what I like. Now we got a nice, clean, smooth transition from there to there. You just put a clamp on here and make sure it didn't go too far. Solve all the world's problems. <laughs> the fun of being a nurse. Problems never stop. This isn't just regular nurse problems. This is wave my magic yeah, wand and find three more nurses. <laughs> yeah, if anyone wants a job as a nurse <laughs> or CNA, uh, let Sarah know. <laughs> She's hiring. She's always hiring. So there we go. There's that joint. Now we can have a little bit of fun and put as much of this together as we can. This one goes into this one. And... Then we can test it with this one, which should go in there, and we shouldn't have any gaps. <laughs> right? Something like that. Ooh, I got a little gap here. This is one of the fun things, because every one of these joints are really nice and tight and clean. And then when you start putting it together, they all push each other around a little bit. And so this chance, let me show you what we've got here. So really nice, tight, really nice, tight, really nice and tight. And then, ooh, that one's got a bit of a gap there. So at this point, I would have to figure out what is stopping it. And I think it actually just needs to be tapped. No, it's got something else holding it. So I'm going to have to work on that one and see what's up with that. But there we go. There's the next joint. Um, let's see. Next time we've got... What is the next one after this? Let's see, we have three more left. I think the next one is pin, where's the tenon? Next one is 
Oh, okay. Next one's the pocket hole. Um, so we're going to do a pocket hole, and then we have a full half lap, and then we have a uh, splined miter, and then we're going to do one last video of putting it all together and actually doing the final fit up and cleaning on it. So lots of fun. What questions we have? Uh, if I missed any, I'm sorry. I'm just going to do the ones I have pulled out right now. Um, Mr. James asked, what side of the marking gauge do you put against the square? The flat. Um, here, let me show you. So, most, uh, let, me, let me actually grab two and show you a couple different types. Um, I have a Kiridashi. Um, <laughs> and so this is a Japanese that has double bevel. Not all Japanese have double bevel. Um, let me grab something to actually mark on them. But it explanifies this uh, concept pretty well. Actually, let's do it this way. Um, so the, the the problem is, you you basically want to create Hang a on. notch. You're not. You basically want to create a notch in the wood. Um, so if you were to zoom in on the edge of the wood, um, I would actually want to have a straight edge, a straight edge, <laughs> and then a beveled angle. And so this area would be waste, and this area would be keep. And that first cut is actually the, um, the, the first cut of the saw. So when I put a square on here, on most, there are single bevels. So there's a bevel on one side. Uh, this one happens to be a two-sided single bevel. And I want to put the flat up against here. And that will give me my notched cut. If I put the bevel up against it, in order to get that notched cut, now the, saw, the blade needs to lean out at an angle. And it's always kind of hard to get it in there. And that may actually push your line away from the marking gauge, or it might be the lever that actually pushes the marking gauge over. Um, and so that's why you, if you're working with one of these, you have to make sure you put the bevel on there. And rather than having the knife vertical, here, move it over. Come on, move. Here, move it over here. Rather than having the knife vertical, you actually have to lean it so that the bevel is flat up against the side here. And you can do the same thing with that. But the nice thing about this one is rather than just having this here, if I were to be using, here, let's pull this over front. If I were to be using this and having a reference surface, I can put that flat up against there and know that I'm getting a really nice clean surface referencing that flat. Whereas if I use the bevel gauge, I have to put it against that bevel and watch it. It just takes a little bit more work. Um, and so that's, that's what you're always trying to do is create that little V cut up against your surface. What's next? Are you obligated to have the end of the tail as wide as the board? It would be easier to start the saw curve a sixteenth inch to have a cleaner saw cut. Can you read that one more time? Are you obligated to have the end of the tail as wide as the board? No, 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 no. Um, the, the only reason I'm doing that on this is it is a skill to learn to cut on the corner and start on a corner. Because there are some times when you have to start on a corner. Mm -hmm. um, like if you're doing miters and things like that, you cut the board to the right length already. Um, and so it's a good skill to have. And so that's one of the reasons why I, I demonstrate it. It is easier to, rather than starting right in the corner, just move it in a little bit and then make your cuts. And that makes it much easier to start. Um, but the whole process of this is learning, trying something new, stretching yourself a little bit. So if that's something you want to do, great. Uh, if you don't, then great. Um, Nice thing about this is it really doesn't matter. There's no practical purpose to this, so you can do whatever you want with yours. Let's see, pit snipe. Where would you use this joint? Um, it's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, there are a lot of uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, mm -hmm. uh, carcass uh, builds. So if you're doing cabinetry, you have a lot of boards that run into each other on flats. Um, so they're they're all you're, you're not running one like that. They're all flat faced. Um, and so you could do a mortise and tenon, um, or you could do um, a bridle joint or a half lap or all sorts of different things. This is just one other option um, where most any of these joints are interchangeable. Um, the nice thing about the dovetail is it shows a dovetail. Um, and so some people like to do that, especially in this case, they might want to cut um, like a hound's tooth dovetail, which just is an artistic dovetail. And it's one of those things that you could put on the face of your cabinetry to show, hey, I put a little bit more work into this. Um, and so it's a, it's a show face. Um, in some of the Japanese tradition, you will actually see a lot of these joinery where you can see these dovetails put into things. Do they need to make the dovetail in there? No, but they're showing it in the work, showing the quality of what's being done. Other Japanese traditions, all the joinery is hidden. 
Uh, it's all inside the joint and uh, full blind. Um, so it's kind of a, yeah, it's one of those things where it doesn't have any particular <coughs> practical purpose um, other than you want to have it that way. Um, in general, the mortise and tenon is going to be a little bit stronger, and so that's why it's the one that's used most often, uh, because it is resisted in all of the movements, uh, whereas the mortise and tenon only comes out this way, whereas the dovetailed half lap only comes out this way. Um, so you've got to kind of look at something. If, you're, if you were creating something that was flat and you wanted to do that, um, it would give you a little bit more strength because some gravity is holding it down and it can't come out in that direction, whereas with the mortise and tenon it could come out in that direction, so there's always weird applications one place or another. But good question. What's next? Esteban asked, any tips on attaching a shoulder vise? I draw board a block into my bench and attach the arm to that using lag screws, but they ripped out. Resources on the topic would be welcome. Um, can you read that one more? I just wanted to get the ending of that. Any tips on attaching a shoulder vise? I draw a board a block into my bench and attach the arm to that using lag screws, but they ripped out. Oh, yeah. Um, if you're making a shoulder vise, uh, those are, they're, they're, they're prone to self-destruction. Um, and I know Rob Cosman loves them. Um, and they, they can be done well. Hardware is almost never the option. It, you really got to have massive, beefy, solid joinery that holds itself together. Um, you want something that can be put in place and held together um, without glue. And then you put glue on top of it to make it even stronger. Um, usually the board coming out is also the end cap of the bench, and so it has a lot more leverage. So if you're just tending it into the end of the bench, um, you're really creating a weak joint to begin with. Usually it's the final board on the end of the bench that then extends out past the, the face. Um, that gives you a lot more um, strength and rigidity. Um, yeah, lag screws are um, probably never the answer in that application. Um, you're you're going to be wanting a, 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 yeah, a, a serious amount of like either a sliding dovetail and then draw board um, or a, a, a finger, a, a long finger joint that's then draw board. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's something really, really solid. So, uh, I actually I'm trying to think of any resources on that because I don't know of anyone directly. I mean, Rob Cosman's done a couple videos on it, but I don't know if he's done one on actually making one. I have to go back and look at that. But he'd be the first person to go up because he's the he's probably the one big guru who uses them a lot. There, there, there's several, but he's the first one that comes to mind. What's next? Um, Jay McGee, um, I just picked up a new combination plane. Which blades are considered essential? Um, for a combination plane, the 90% the, the of the work you're going to do with it is grooves and dados. So get the sets of however wide you want them to be. Um, and if you are going to be buying them, what I generally tell people is don't go buy a set because you're gonna buy a set and half of them you're never gonna use. Buy them as you need them. You can buy them individually from uh, Lee, uh, uh, Lee Valley um, if you want brand new, but you can get them for five or six bucks um, antique. You can get them on eBay or if you find someone in a seller. Um, go to handtoolfinder.com, down the list of an, uh, antique sellers on there. Um, almost all of them have a bucket of blades and they'll sell them to you for five bucks a piece. Um, often when I go to some of the tool sales, there'll be someone with an 18-gallon tote that's just full of them. Um, and in that case, buy them as you need them. Don't buy a set. So you have a project coming up and like, hey, I need a 3 8 groove. Well, then go buy a 3 8 cutter. Um, and it, it ends up being far more economical in the end, and then you're not laden with all of these cutters that you don't normally use. Um, but plows are the most common. Um, next would be your tonguing. Um, then you've got beading, and after that it really depends on your style because most of the others are molding and it depends on your, your particular taste in furniture. I'm trying to think if there's anything else on that list. Probably is, but I'm missing it. <laughs> What's next? Good. That's it. Now, I saw one other person asking if I'm going to be at Handworks. Yes, I'm going to be at Handworks. Um, actually, Rex and I are going to be doing a meetup. Uh, we just got information on that, and so it'll be at 3 p.m. on Friday of uh, Handworks, and we'll be uh, posting some information on that coming up. 
So if you're going to be Handworks, uh, Rex and I will be getting together and doing a, a group meetup. Um, it will be a lot of fun. So I'm looking forward to seeing you. And if, for those of you who just got on, um, go to, they have a link down below, handtoolfinder.com, and I now have a list of all of the hand tool woodworking events around the world. Um, and it, yeah, it's everything on there, everything I know of. And you know of something that's not on there, please let me know. Um, yeah. <laughs> so um, I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye.